So yeah, I'm gonna talk about Unsplash, but uh, first, hi. Um, I'm Luke, uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Crew Unsplash and the Crew Collective and Cafe in Montreal. Uh, so I'm actually from Montreal, flew down today. Uh, so I'll tell you quickly, Crew. Uh, Crew is basically a place that connects uh, the best developers and designers in the world um, with short-term uh, freelance projects. Um, so if you're looking to do work uh, and uh, you know, you've, you've been around the block a bit, you should apply to Crew. Um, there's a whole bunch of amazing work going on there. Uh, the second thing we made is the Crew Collective and Cafe up in Montreal. Um, so it's actually a cafe. Uh, it looks like Grand Central Station, basically. Uh, it's a cafe, a co-working space. Uh, it was just ranked the number one co-working space in the world by Forbes, which was really cool. Uh, it's about a year old now. Uh, and it's also our offices. Um, the third thing which I'm gonna tell you a story about to close out the night is the story of Unsplash and how it came to be. Um, so for the people who don't know, as Dan just explained, um, Unsplash is basically a place where you can go and all the photos uh, can be used for any kind of project. So whether it's commercial or personal, you can go there, you can download them in full res and use them. Uh, no credit is required, but we do encourage it, of course. Um, and yeah, I wanna tell you guys about the story of how Unsplash came to be. Uh, and so that means going back to 2013. Uh, so 2013, we were called Oomph. Uh, we just heard about how important it is to name your company correctly. Don't name your company Oomph, it's a terrible name. Um, so Oomph was the original version of Crew. Uh, and so we were making our homepage, uh, and this was 2013, right? So you needed a big banner image. You know, this was the early days of Medium and all that stuff. You needed a big banner image, and you needed a banner image that had, um, we'll get to that in a sec, actually, sorry. Um, you needed a banner image that has MacBooks, of course, because and coffee and iPads. Uh, and so we went out and uh, we looked at what was there, and we couldn't find anything that we, uh, we really liked and really resonated with us. So we went out and we shot our own photos. Um, and so we hired a photographer in Montreal. We worked with them, and we shot these photos. And they look dated now, and they're probably not the best photos uh, that you're gonna find on Unsplash. But at the time, we were really happy with these. It was what we wanted. And we put it up on our site. Um, but we had 10 leftover photos. Uh, and. Uh, you know, we didn't need to use them. We had our one photo that we wanted to use, and these were some pretty cool photos of MacBooks and iPads and stuff, and we were like, someone else is gonna wanna use these, of course. Um, so one of my co-founders, Mikel, uh, he basically went, he busted out Tumblr, and he threw these 10 photos up on Tumblr, uh, and he called it Unsplash. Uh, and for reasons I'm still not really sure uh, to this day, he said that there would be 10 more photos coming in 10 days. <laughs> And we didn't have 10 more photos, but uh, we published it that night, and we went to bed. And to be honest, like what, what would have been cool to us would have been you know, if this thing had been seen by a couple hundred people or friends, you know, family, whatever, uh, and if it provided some click-throughs to uh, crew, that would have been awesome. But we woke up in the morning, and this thing was everywhere. It was on the front page of Hacker News. It was on, uh, you know, we were getting emails, tweets, the whole thing. Uh, we actually broke Dropbox for a little while. Um, <laughs> because uh, so many people were downloading these, these images, uh, and it was a Dropbox link originally, um, so they weren't too happy about that. Um, yeah, and so uh, that was completely surprising, it was amazing. Um, uh, yeah, in the first day there, there was uh, 20,000 downloads of these 10 photos, which just blew away all of our expectations. Um, and then the weirdest thing started happening, uh, more people kept submitting, um, or people started submitting, sorry people started submitting photos to Unsplash, and the, the quality of the photos was, you know, was way better than our photos. Um, but also, they were, you know, there were a whole bunch of diverse types, and we just really were blown away with the photos that were being submitted. Um, and so, kind of the way this worked was, Unsplash was a way to refer people to Crew. It was like a lead gen for Crew. Um, and that's how it operated for about the first year. Um, and so, no one really, worked on Unsplash, it was this thing that ran in the background, it was like five minutes every 10 days. Uh, you know, someone would go in, collect the 10 photos, send them out. Um, but it was so successful that it actually saved our company crew. Um, it was the thing that basically provided so many referrals that it allowed us to raise money on crew and build crew out into a proper company. Um, and so we did that for the first year. So that takes us to 2014. Um, and we hit our first crossroads in 2014 because we'd seen this amazing growth with Unsplash and we'd seen that no matter what, like no matter what we did and the lack of doing stuff, it just kept growing and kept growing. Um, and so we faced a decision, you know. Um, we didn't have a coherent strategy. We didn't know what the market was. We didn't know 
uh, what a business would look like in this or what the opportunity even you know, would look like. Um, but at the same time, we kept seeing these really cool use cases for Unsplash that really surprised us. Like Adobe was presenting with Unsplash photos at the Adobe conference, which didn't make sense to us because Adobe owns a stock photo company. <laughs> um, and then you know, WordPress uh, was shipping their, uh, their annual theme with, with uh, Unsplash photos, and that was really cool. And then you know, these multi-platinum award-winning artists were shipping, or not shipping, releasing, uh, releasing uh, albums with Unsplash photos on the front. And uh, you know, we're seeing them in Hollywood movies as well as you know, we just start seeing them literally everywhere. Um, every company, every designer, everyone was using it. Um, and so the crossroads basically led us to say, we think there's something special there, but we also think there's something special with crew. Um, and how do you make those two things kind of work? And so what we did was within the startup crew, we created another startup, uh, Unsplash, and originally it was just one person. Um, but we split the teams actually. They operated using the same budget, but it was basically crew gets like all the money, Unsplash gets one person, um, but you know, make things happen. Uh, and so we did that, you know, from 2015 till 2016. Um, obviously, you can see where this chart's going to go because this was good growth at the time. Um, but basically, this was how we started out. Uh, we had some good growth, um, and we started adding little features like search. Uh, we released more photos, so there was more photos coming in all the time, and we said, we want to release all these. Let's not keep doing the 10 every 10 day thing. Let's release all of them, uh, so long as they're really good photos. Uh, we also created an API. The API um, now has 6,000 applications that it powers, um, from people like Envision, uh, through to Google, through to Adobe. Um, there's a lot of really cool companies doing things with Unsplash. Um, and it's basically this free access to 200,000 images uh, that can be used for anything. So it's opening up completely new uh, you know, product use cases because there's never been basically an API that can be used in this way with photos. We create collections, uh, and all the while our growth just continued to kind of climb and climb and climb. And you know, the photos themselves just got better, and they got better, and they got better, and it was just amazing to us to see the quality of these photos. Uh, we'd open up you know, iTunes and there would be you know, an Unsplash photo. And we would go to apple.com and there was an Unsplash photo. Um, and all the while, growth kept going up. And this was with the team of like two or three people at this time. Um, and then you know, we started doing some little projects, like we made the Unsplash book, which was basically uh, the world's first uh, crowdsourced book using open content, uh, where what we did was we sold the book and it, well, we did a Kickstarter campaign and then sold the book um, afterwards, and we gave basically all the profits away to the people who had contributed to the book, um, which was really cool. So these people had submitted to Unsplash. Um, they weren't expecting anything back, you know, they were submitting, and, uh, and then basically we, we made this book for them, and then they got paid, which was kind of cool. Um, NASA signed up, which was really cool, and not to be outdone, SpaceX signed up shortly after. <laughs> Um, and then people started hosting meetups around the world, uh, which was really cool. We basically, we've done events with Apple, we've done uh, events with Sony, uh, we've been in New York, uh, Korea, uh, just a whole bunch of places, which has been really cool. Um, and that brings us basically to this year, with two, 2017. Um, and so our growth has been um, pretty crazy. It's been, um, it's been just like a steady upwards trend, which is nice, uh, apart from Christmas. Um, where it always goes down. People don't like free photos on Christmas. Um, so yeah, basically, it's been this crazy upwards trend, and that led us to crossroads number two, which we basically just got to. Um, there's no like great ending to this story, I'll give you a hint, we're basically here. Um, crossroads number two is basically the Unsplash has had great you know, success. It's been doing all this with a really small team, and all the while we've been trying to do crew, Unsplash, and a cafe, and co-working space. Um, and that led us to basically say, we had to pick what we wanted to do between crew and Unsplash and which one we wanted to have uh, funding, essentially, because being a Canadian company, uh, unfortunately in Canada, they make it really hard to split companies, especially startups, um, and so we couldn't really leave it up to the Canadian government, so we had to basically pick one, which one was gonna get the most resources. And previously it had been crew, but then we got really excited about Unsplash. <laughs> um, so what we did uh, recently was we actually turned Unsplash into its own company, uh, and it's got a much larger team now, and we're building a whole bunch of new 
uh, kind of exciting things. Uh, and on the flip side, Crew has been kind of, you know, it's, it's not going to grow any larger in terms of, you know, the people that work there, but uh, it's doing its thing, it's doing well, but all our focus really now is on, uh, is on Unsplash. And that seems kind of crazy because Crew's making money and Unsplash gives away free photos. <laughs> um, and that doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people, including like my parents. Um, <laughs> but uh, to put it in perspective, Unsplash is now the third largest photography company uh, or photography website in the world. Um, and that was with a team of like two to three people working on it most of the time. For half of its life, it was less than a person. Um, and most of these companies have been around for a lot longer um, and have much, much bigger teams. Um, it's also the most viral photography platform in the world. So a photo that is posted on Unsplash uh, just instantly goes viral, kind of like content at BuzzFeed here um, goes viral. Um, and yeah, these are just some of the photos I grabbed today. So to give you an idea of just like we're, we're in the present day, these were photos literally released today that just blow my mind that these are being uploaded to Unsplash. Um, so these are being released every day, hundreds or thousands of these photos. Um, and so like I said, there's no kind of end to this story. Like we're right in the middle, I think, of where Unsplash, not even the middle, we're like in the beginning of what Unsplash is. Um, so before I kind of pull out some lessons, I'd like to kind of preface it with, this could all go horribly wrong. <laughs> but, um, all right. Um, so the first one, I think, is safe decisions, uh, build safe products in mediocre companies. Um, it's it's kind of crazy to do things like Unsplash, or it's kind of crazy to start a company at all, but you're going to be faced with decisions when you start a company that um, are really risky. Like, they're starting a company, quitting your job, all that stuff, and then there's, like, putting it all on a free photo site, which is kind of crazy. Um, and one of the things is, like, Personally, I, I wouldn't want to work for a mediocre company. I wouldn't want to build a mediocre company, and I wouldn't want to build a safe product. So um, if we go back to kind of crossroads number one, which was we rolled the dice there. We basically said crew, crew should have everyone focused on it. You know, at the time it was five, six people, and we took me off of it and stuck me on Unsplash, and I should have been working on crew. It meant that we didn't have a designer anymore. Uh, we lost an engineer, uh, all that stuff, and that was a risky decision. Um, the second thing is that we didn't know what we were building, really. We didn't know what the opportunity was. We didn't have answers to a whole bunch of our questions, which leads me to say that it's okay not to have all the answers when you build a company. Um, I think when people talk about building companies, they talk about kind of like these light bulb moments where they knew that this thing was going to be successful. Um, and I think the truth is that a lot of companies don't have that. Obviously, Unsplash's like, story is a little bit different than most companies, but um, I think it's okay to not have those answers to things like, um, you know, how big is this or what's kind of our long-term strategy. Um, if you focus on building things that solve a problem, um, that's the big thing. And if we're talking about designers here, everyone here knows how to solve problems. They know how to uh, iterate on problems. And that's really all taking an idea and turning it into a business or a company is, um, but just a little more risky, I guess. Um, and kind of the last thing before I end is that when people tell these stories of how they built companies or, or had success or failures or whatever, they tell stories, I think, that really make it seem like they didn't have a lot of problems or they had problems, but they always knew the answers to the problems or like when they retell their story, it's this perfect kind of trajectory. And I think the thing is like most companies aren't like that. Every company, every idea you have is going to have a ton of problems. Like we just heard from um, Marcella there. Um, that whole thing to do with the key would have been a reason why I wouldn't have started, the, you know, like most people wouldn't start that company, but she started it, and that's pretty crazy. Um, but other companies all have these same problems, and I think um, if there's one thing to kind of take out of the whole Unsplash story is that um, you should build things um, kind of regardless of, well, I'll put it another way. When I think of building a company, or at least the way I used to think of it, is that you would, you would have an idea and then you'd start poking holes in it pretty much immediately. You would say, this is 10 reasons why, why this isn't gonna work. Um, but the thing is, pretty much every idea has these crazy problems and that's why other people haven't built it. Um, and I think the great thing is, is like designers who are all here, like you guys know that uh, problems are solvable. Um, 
And if there's one thing I hope designers kind of do more of is to kind of try the business route a bit more, try and be more entrepreneurial because uh, they know how to solve problems. Uh, but I think oftentimes we're a little bit scared to actually get into the business side. But the great thing is, is that no one really has these answers. Um, and yeah, thank you guys. Yes, yes, there is definitely an idea for a business model. Um, so there's a couple ways we've thought about monetizing on Splash in the past. Um, there's the obvious ways, which are all what you know, our, our investors originally pushed us to do, which was slap a paywall on it um, and have people uh, pay for photos. They also said, you know, you could do a, like a freemium, premium thing and have people uh, you know, pay for subscription or whatever. And our, our thing at the end of the day is that we believe that photography is changing a lot. Obviously, that's why Unsplash exists, is that photography is changing a lot. And when we look at this industry, we look at all these old businesses, uh, whether it's Getty or Shutterstock, and these are companies that are worth billions of dollars. Um, but what's happening in photography is really interesting, both from like a technological standpoint, as well as just from like a cultural standpoint. So if you look at all the things that are happening in photography, you've got um, people, you know, pr probably everyone in this room is a photographer to some extent. Um, more so than, say, their parents would have been, um, or a previous generation. Uh, at the same time, we all have access to high-quality cameras, and those cameras are now being built by the two you know, best, most profitable companies in the world, which means that they're accelerating the pace of camera development. So the cameras which we're all going to have access to, especially in the next you know, five, ten years, are going to be so much better than the previous generation of cameras. And there's an interesting kind of divide there because analog for so long was something that digital was catching up to. And I think what we've seen in the last, say, five, 10 years is that digital is starting to outpace um, analog. All this to say, <laughs> there is a business model. Um, <laughs> all this to say that we see a lot of things changing. Uh, and so what we don't want to do is build a business model based on this past. Um, what we do want to do is build a business model that's based on sustaining this thing that makes Unsplash successful, which is the fact that anyone can go and use these photos, which is a huge market of people. Um, and the really interesting thing about Unsplash is the virality of the photos. So um, some of those photos are some of the most viewed photos ever, um, which is crazy. Because what happens is not only are they seen a ridiculous amount of times on Unsplash, but they are then used uh, you know, on the number one post on Medium, or they're used on a BuzzFeed article, or they're used on a, you know, an album cover, or whatever it is, they end up being spread like wildfire, basically. And what we think is an interesting approach to this would be to look at native advertising. Um, so BuzzFeed, obviously, is kind of the, the, the major um, player in native advertising. Um, and so native advertising is not like banner ads or anything like that. It's basically taking content that is native to the platform and saying to brands or companies, they can work, say, with photographers um, to create content on Unsplash that then spreads and gets all over the internet. And we can do things like we can promote those photos across many of the apps we've built. We can promote them across the 6,000 API applications. Um, we can promote them on Unsplash.com. There's searches, there's intent, there's all these things which are quite interesting and well-suited for uh, native advertising. That's our main kind of approach. There are other ones that you could fall back to, um, but I think that's the one that excites us the most. Um, yeah, but we're early on. Like, we, are, we, we have not done much with native advertising. <laughs> we are not turning a big profit right now. Um, but one thing uh, that I think is interesting is the fact that we are focused right now on growth only, which again seems weird why we're not focused on native advertising. Our thing is that we think that this as a market is 10 to 100 times bigger than what it's still on Splash is. And so what we want to do is kind of basically be that number one spot no matter what. So right now, there's a lot of great content on Unsplash. There's some content that's missing, obviously. And I think if you're a designer in this room, you've tried to use Unsplash, you know sometimes it doesn't have the photos you're looking for. And what we want to do is first solve that problem. And then we think there's, if we solve that and we do that right, 
you'd have to screw it up pretty heavily not to be able to do something like native advertising with it. It's a long answer to. <laughs> Yes, that is a great question. Um, so there's a few tools you can use. I can't give away the exact process, obviously, because then I'm going to have to go change it. <laughs> uh, but basically between, uh, so we, we review every single photo that comes into Unsplash. Um, it's one of the great things. So we, talking about design, we, we purposely designed Unsplash not to upload 100, you know, as a photographer, you're not meant to upload 100 photos to Unsplash because chances are you don't have 100 great photos uh, to upload. Uh, we don't want to see your dogs and your cats uploaded 100 times because we have to review those then. Um, so one of the things we did was we focused the design on really kind of pushing people to just upload one photo. Um, and with that, then we can take a human curation approach to it, which is step one. So they go through every person that uploads. They verify their profiles. They verify what they do. Um, it sounds kind of scary, but <laughs> But it's like a good thing. Um, and then there's a lot of tools basically you can use to run checks on photos to see where they are on the internet and whether or not they've been uploaded places. Um, yeah, and I can't really say more than that, but, but we do verify every photo. Uh, we also use DMCA, so any photo that does come in that uh, is copyrighted um, uh, is immediately taken down. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you.